Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now what I have here is a very interesting router, dual gigabit ethernet, based on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 with a custom carrier board. So if you wanna find out more, please well, let me explain. So this very flexible and powerful router based on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 comes from Seed Studios. This is not a sponsored video, however, I would like to thank Seed Studios for sending me a review unit. Now, inside of this little box is a carrier board specifically designed for router applications. And then on top of that board, you get a, uh, a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. Now, this comes in various different configurations. You can get just a carrier board. You can add your own compute module to it. You can get the carrier board with the compute module, or you can get the carrier board with the compute module and with this case and a power supply. And that's the version that I've got. Now, before we look at this router, we need to ask ourselves the question, why do you want to use it? What, what is a router? Well, a uh, router or a router, if you're using the American uh, pronunciation, I'm going to use the British English pronunciation, routes data packets of internet from one network to another. So here is something you may have like at your house, you know, you've kind of got this uh, modem or modem router that you got from your uh, internet service provider. Then you've got some LAN cables, maybe things connecting just via Wi-Fi, a desktop, maybe over the kind of the, the cables. And then it routes the traffic and also does modem functionality depending on the type of um, connection you've got to your house. And then that goes out onto the internet. And here in the house, you've probably got 192.168.1.x that's anything from you know one all the way up to 255. Normally, dot one is actually the the router itself. They're all the addresses that you've got in your network. Now that means you already have here a router. It's the one provided along with your uh, internet connection. Maybe you bought it as a third party one. Now you can replace that router with the uh, Raspberry Pi Mini router here, and you can run OpenWRT on it, which is an open source alternative firmware that allows you to do lots of kind of interesting things. We'll talk about more of that in a minute on your network via this router. So in this case, you can see basically the routing is doing the same thing. It's taking the traffic from what you have on your home network and putting it out onto the internet. And this might be called the LAN connection, local area connection. And this one here on the left might be called the WAN, the wide area connection. And it routes between the two of them. Literally it goes in here, round around the inside and out the other one. Now, another scenario where you might want to use a router is that you have a network set up as we described previously, but you also have another bunch of computers. For example, maybe you've segregated some computers specifically for gaming. So the traffic is only the gaming traffic that's going on here, or maybe you've got you know uh, guest networks, or maybe you've got something in a small business, you've got a different network. Whatever reason, you've got another network, and this is just a normal switch or hub here, and these are all connected together. Now, of course, at some point, you probably want this, these computers to be connected to the internet. Now, of course, there could be a second internet connection into your building, into your house, or of course it can go via your existing setup. And that's where you would use something like the CM4 base mini router. It will basically connect from this switch or hub that's connecting to all these PCs, and then it will go into there and then it will route out back up to your existing router and then onto the internet. And this allows you here to provide a kind of a firewall and different functionalities like a bandwidth monitoring, quality of service. So you make sure that only the stuff that needs to get rooted out onto the internet, only the internet comes in through here that is needed and everything else stays separate and secure. So let's have a quick look at the carrier board here from a networking point of view. As I mentioned earlier, they call it the WAN port and the LAN port. So this port here would have a DHCP server, which basically means anything that's connected to it can ask for a dynamically allocated IP address. 192.168.2.1 would be that one. And then I've got a client device here as an example, 192.168.2.10, and it's got its address from here. And then on the other side, this acts as a DHCP client, which means it asks for address. What address do I need on this network, and then it is then connected to your ISP router or uh, modem for off to the internet. And basically, what happens is a client device will come in through here, goes in through all the magic that's the you know the compute module four and all the other stuff we'll talk about in a minute, out onto the WAN uh, and back again. And that's the way it works. And from the outside, it looks like this. As I said, that's the LAN port one on the right hand side, Ether zero in uh, Linux terms. The WAN port is one here on the left hand side, Ether one. And we'll talk more about here, but you can see that the gigabit ethernet 
uh, physical connection of the CM or the Compute Module 4, which is based on the Broadcom, is the one on the left. The one on the right is one using the Microtrip LAN 7800, which is USB 3 to gigabit Ethernet, and we'll talk more about that now. So of the dual gigabit, one Ethernet port is connected to the gigabit Ethernet physical connection of the CM4 module, which is based on the Broadcom BCM5421010 PE, which is basically a 100,000 base T uh, network uh, uh, chip, and that works on standard Category 5 unshielded twisted pair cables, so basically an Ethernet cable. Now the other one is a gigabit Ethernet port that's connected to Microchips LAN 7800, which is a chip that basically does USB 3 to gigabit Ethernet, and then the USB 3 side is actually taken from the PCI interface of the Compute Module 4. So the normal carrier board has a USB 2, here you've got USB 3, and it's actually connected wired directly into the PCI Express interface, so you're getting the best speed that you can get out of this, and therefore you're getting gigabit Ethernet out of both ports. One connected directly to the processor, the other via a USB 3 bridge. So what else do you get in this compute module? Well, of course, it's based on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. It includes the CM4, the kit that I got. As I said, you can buy it in different variations. The one you get in the kit is with four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal memory using eMMC. It has dual gigabit ethernet, as we've mentioned. It supports OpenWRT, that is a open source router firmware. Of course, it also supports Raspberry Pi OS because this is a standard compute module 4, so you can install uh, Raspberry Pi OS on it. You've got lots of other connectivity because this is an alternative carrier board, so you do have cameras and display interfaces, including HDMI. You've got dual USB 3, and then also on the board itself, you've got another 9-pin header for even more USB 3 ports. You've got a micro SD card slot if you need to use it with a non EMC uh, version of the Compute Module 4. There's external fan support and it's powered by USB type C and the adapter you get if you buy it in the full kit is 5 volts and 4 amps which is a very healthy power supply which will allow you to connect things like external hard drives uh, without it being a drain on the overall power so that's really good. So a quick look at the actual board itself. You can see there the USB 3 9 pin header. You've got these various camera and display connectors here that I was talking about. Connector for a fan. You've got the micro uh, HDMI. You've got the USB C. Of course, you've got the dual gigabit ports. You've got those two uh, USB 3 ports. You can solder on here a serial port if you want to. Of course, it comes. This one comes with 32 gigabytes of EMC on the Compute 4 module. You can see that there, outlined by these four holes this is the module that goes on the carrier board which is here below you've got wi-fi of course is built into that bluetooth and then you've got the various gigabit stuff that's connected the physical stuff that goes onto the compute module four gigabytes of ram and a nice little reset button here so you can actually use this just as a carrier board with the compute module or of course you can use it you know specifically for open wrt Talking of OpenWRT, it's mainly, it's what comes pre-flashed on the device. It's mainly controlled by the web interface. You can log in with Secure Shell. I've done that, tested it, works absolutely fine. But normally you're going through the web menu, you type in the username and password. And then as you can see, you have a fairly uh, nice uh, web interface to OpenWRT. So really now we're looking at what you can do with OpenWRT. Of course, there's firewall functionality. There's a kind of all kinds of different servers. You can run Docker, look here, network attached storage, VPN. You can try all these different things that, you can, that are supported by WRT, OpenWRT. And as its default configuration, it just works as a router uh, using uh, those two ports, LAN and WAN, as I described earlier. And it just works. You just plug it in and you've got connectivity between those two networks that you have connected. So as I mentioned, uh, just some of the different functions. It's a router by default, because there's a whole lot of firewall stuff you can do. NAS functionality, I've tried that. You can plug in an external hard drive and then you can start sharing folders. That works. Dynamic DNS, if you want to have a permanent kind of uh, domain name going through to a dynamically allocated address. That's what dynamic DNS does for you. Bandwidth monitoring. There's Wi-Fi support so you can connect to the router also via Wi-Fi and then that will get you out onto the internet via its routing capabilities. Very, very flexible and comprehensive. Now, of course, the big question when it comes to a board like this is not only its flexibility, but also its performance. So I did some performance testing using iPerf3, and that means I don't need to rely on the speed of my internet connection. Okay, what I'm doing is talking about the connection along this path here. So on this PC, I have an iPerf3 server running. 
This is all gigabit ethernet on this side of the server. Then on this side, I've got a client. This is all again, gigabit ethernet cards and cables. And basically you go into the mini router, out again and onto the server. Now how quickly can data transfer between these two via this device here? And of course this switch here, but I know already that this switch is a good uh, gigabit ethernet switch. And so let's have a look. So the first one is you can see here going from the client to the server, I managed a speed of 942 megabits per second, which is basically the full saturation point, 1.1 gigabytes per second of the network. So pretty much there at saturation point. You can then run it in reverse. And when I did that, I got slightly slower speed, but still very impressive, 914 megabits per second, 1.06 gigabytes per second. So that is again, very, very close to saturation, but not quite as fast. So it's clearly a slight difference in the, the, the speed going one way than the other, but not much in it, certainly over 900 megabits a second, which is pretty impressive. Okay, so there you have it, a versatile and flexible solution there. You can use it for open uh, WRT. If that's what you want to do, you could use it as an alternative to the official carrier board from Raspberry Pi for your compute module. You can reflash and do whatever you want, depending on what project you've got. So flexibility here is the key. And if you do want to get hold of one, I'll leave a link uh, into the description below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well then do stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.